we're Christians, we have the commission mm-hmm. to go and make disciples where we are. It doesn't have to be traveling to a different continent, mm-hmm. a different country. Mm-hmm. Wherever you are, being faithful and serving God is missionary. It's utilizing your third place. Mm-hmm. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Unworld. And if you didn't already know this, you have landed yourself on the best channel on YouTube where we talk about different topics um, the biblical way. So with me here today is... Renee. And I'm Miriam. So Renee, could you tell us, where are you? I'm here. Where are you? I'm here too. And where is here? Here is where we are. Which is... The third place. (laughs) So today's episode is called The Third Place. So what is The Third Place, Miriam? Um, The Third Place is not your every every Sunday church meetings it's not your bible study it's just a neutral place where you can gather people and have true community so it's basically like an informal setting where you can share the gospel pretty much yes neutral regular nothing special just everyday rhythm stuff okay so um i guess based on that i can give an example of the third place so this is not my personal experience it's a story i saw online so there's this lady and um she was living in a hostel and she decided that she was going to start making pancakes every sunday morning and hand them out to people then after eating pancakes together she would invite them do you want to go to church with me and she found out that there were actually lots of people who wanted to go to church on sundays but either didn't have a ride or didn't have someone who they could go with. So by doing that, she created a community where they could all come together and go to church together. And so people who had just come for free pancakes ended up giving their lives to Christ and becoming Christians. So that's an example of the third place being in action. Yeah. Do you have any examples? Um, your example just like showed using where you are, um, choosing what to use it for. But the example I have is actually one where they didn't choose where they were. It was a family, they were already Bible study people, so Mm -hmm. it wasn't so neutral for them. And they had a kid, and when he was eight months, he got diagnosed with leukemia. Mm -hmm. So he was admitted to the hospital, and um, the Bible study people started visiting them at the hospital. They would worship with them, pray with them, and soon enough, they would pray with other staff, other patients. So the hospital became a third place to them, Mm -hmm. even though it wasn't their intent, like, choice please but because they found themselves there for whatever reason they made the most out of it which made it a useful third place where they shared mission yeah yeah and um thinking about third place and we know we said we're doing the biblical perspective (laughs) and all um third place ends up with mission mission is all about people Mm -hmm. and the first place we know about mission is like in the Bible where we have the Great Commission. Mm. The Bible tells us to go and make disciples of all nations. Um, not just one specific place, but just wherever you find yourself, all nations. Um, so there are missionaries in the Bible. Do you have any missionaries that you look up to? I think Jesus. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Um, I think Paul. Paul's mm. entire life just screams missionary. So mm-hmm. he just had his big U-turn and we know all his letters were mission journeys. So mm-hmm. It's very inspirational. So do you want to give us, say, an example of Jesus? Mm. Okay, so for Jesus, I mean, the third place sometimes means going out your, out of your way to somewhere that might be uncomfortable for you. So we all know, or maybe not all of us, but if you know about the Israelites and their relationship with the Samaritans, you know that those were people that they didn't want to be associated with. They would go out of their way to travel around instead of just passing through Samaria. But Jesus decided, you know, I'm going to go to the third place and make it there. And that's how he found the Samaritan woman who came to draw from the well. And through just speaking to her in a very casual way, it wasn't like he told her like, you are dying and you need help. (laughs) But he offered her living water, the water that you can never run out of. Mm -hmm. And from there, she was able to go back to her village and tell everyone about it. And many people believed in Christ after that. So that's an example of how sometimes the third place calls for you to go outside of your comfort zone or go somewhere where maybe you're unwanted, but to still use that opportunity to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. Speaking about um, going out of your comfort zone and Jesus, what just came to my mind is 
going to parties, you know, <laughs> as a very social introvert that I am, I have fun in my bedroom. Mm. So going out, meeting people, that's not my cup of tea. So third place is something that is hard for me. But like looking at Jesus's life, I think of the first miracle and that happened at a wedding celebration. I dread weddings, even if it's my family, mm. my friends, like... I would rather come and sit in the car if I have to be there. But Jesus showed up to that wedding celebration and um, it became a third place for him because he used it. Uh, they ran out of wine. And in that instance, Mary to just gathered people to obey him and what came out of using the third place, the best wine they could ever have. And this is his first miracle. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know how mm -hmm. Mary knew that this guy could turn water to wine. <laughs> but she just knew I can use this place I'm at and Jesus is here. So we're going to use it and roll with it. Mm -hmm. And so that just shows when you show up and utilize your third place, mission happens mm -hmm. instantly. Mm -hmm. So you said Paul is your favorite missionary. Paul is my favorite. So do you have any examples of Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Once you just mentioned the name Paul, in my head, I'm already singing Paul and Silas they prayed and that just speaks about the story of when Paul went to preach he was already doing mission work he's mm -hmm. a missionary like I said so he was out preaching doing God's work and Paul got arrested mm -hmm. if I was Paul at that instance I would probably be thinking maybe I did things wrong maybe God didn't want me preaching mm -hmm. Maybe he wants me to stop all the different things. Or I would even be wondering, why did God forsake me? Mm. I would have so much doubt about what I've done and what I should be doing. That is what I would naturally do. But when we look at Paul, who was an amazing missionary, he made the prison his third place. Mm -hmm. He was locked up against his will for doing good. And what did he do there? He prayed, he sang, and we saw the Holy Spirit come and release him. Mm -hmm. Again, if I was Paul, that's my cue to run it because <laughs> why am I in the prison? But Paul stayed there and utilized the third place to its completion. Mm. And we see that Paul just being there, just doing what he was called to do in that instance led to the prison guards conversion and his family as well they came to mm -hmm. the saving knowledge of jesus mm -hmm. and let's be honest paul is an amazing missionary so you should have at least <laughs> one story for us about paul i mean we have the story of just every time he traveled he would always go into the marketplaces it didn't have to be at the synagogues and then i believe it was when he was in athens and he heard um of the unknown god and he used that opportunity that something in their culture he helped relate it to Christ, he told them this unknown God, he is Jesus, he's God, and this is what he did. He came, he died for you, and now you have salvation, and he's the only one true God. You don't need all these other gods. And it shows us that um, when meeting in the third place, it's helpful to have something that the person can connect to already. So it's never a bad idea to learn about the person's culture or to even start to form a relationship with them before having that opportunity to share Christ, obviously if it presents yourself like this unknown God example, always jump on it. But yeah, you can serve God everywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of good examples of, of people in mm. real life and in the Bible, which is also real, life, don't <laughs> get me wrong. But um, I just want to bring it home to mm -hmm. us um, and what the third place has been for us and what we can use of it. But to start, I guess, I want you to think of, say, a third place you've experienced. And in that specific question, I just want to know, where would you say is the first place you heard about Christ and had that community of people? Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, my I come from a Christian family. So the first place I heard about Christ was at home with my family. Um, from the music my parents would play, the TV shows we'd watch, just the family devotion. It was like... This was a family that loves God and serves God. So just from a very young age, I knew that, you know, Christ loves me. <laughs> and that is normal to even talk about Christ. Because I remember we used to have a driver that was Muslim. Mm -hmm. And every time he would play secular music, me and my brother would start like screaming and saying, no, we'll start trying to <laughs> preach to him about how Jesus loves you. You need to give your life to Christ. I was like five years old. I probably didn't even understand most of what I was saying. But just from how much my family had like showed me Christ. Yeah. This was something that was comfortable speaking about to anyone. So I agree. I was born Christian as well. So I had a similar experience of caring about Christ from the people I love, the people that 
um, loved me and it was just easy to understand and grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so where I was at that time was at home and home was the third place I got to encounter Christ and that's where I am now. And thinking about how where we were brought us to this privilege of being Jesus' favorite daughter. <laughs> Let's talk about how you have utilized the third place. Mm. So um, recently, sometimes I'll just be on Instagram and I'll literally just like maybe see a post, a prayer and encouragement and God will just drop someone's um, name in my mind. And I remember there was this particular one. It was someone who I hadn't spoken to in years. I didn't know what the person was going through. Like... I mean, based on Instagram, it seemed like their life was good. But the passage that showed up was um, talking about like this person. It was a prayer for if you're stressed and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I don't even feel comfortable sharing this. But like something just told me to share it. You don't know what they're going through. And I shared it. And she responded and she was like, wow, this is exactly what I needed to hear right now. Thank you for sharing. And it just shows you that sometimes when you hear that voice and you're telling you, go and do this, go and help this person, pray for this person. That's an opportunity to like use the third place and actually spread the gospel, pray for someone. You don't know how far it goes in helping them out. Yeah, yeah. Third place being exactly where you are, even mm -hmm. if it's just social media. Even if it's social media. Yeah. And for me, I guess, um, thinking about my own first third place being home, where I have recently been using third places at home because I have younger ones, I mm -hmm. have younger siblings there in elementary school. And it's easy for you to get carried away with feeding them, playing with them, occupying their time. Mm -hmm. But what you don't realize is where you are, where I am right now is at home. So talking to them about Christ is a good point. That is how I came to know about Christ. Mm -hmm. So that is a good place to share Christ with them. And just before we close, <laughs> um, we are talking about all the good sides about third place. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mentioned Paul going to prison and all. Mm -hmm. But besides that, is there any challenges that come with third place? I mean, you've kind of touched on this, but like being an introvert. And then I feel like sometimes the, you care about how people perceive you. So I know sometimes, you know, I don't know how my mom would feel maybe about me going out somewhere. Even if I say I'm going to share the gospel, she can say like, it's unsafe, you know, you shouldn't go out at this time, things like that. So I feel like sometimes our family, our friends and them not understanding that call that we have to go out can mm -hmm. stop you or can be a challenge when you're trying to yeah. share the gospel. I 100% mm -hmm. agree with you because mission is 100% people based. Mm -hmm. So the problem is almost 100% people based <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some times where it's financial and all yeah. this other stuff, mm -hmm. but it's hundred a lot percent people based mm -hmm. because sometimes even the misunderstanding, it's just, the people you want to talk to, you can be scared of how they would mm -hmm. react like, in your mm -hmm. example and it can hinder you from utilizing your third place. But we're Christians, we have the commission mm -hmm. to go and make disciples where we are. It doesn't have to be traveling to a different continent, mm -hmm. a different country. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, being faithful and serving God is missionary. It's utilizing your third place. Mm -hmm. All right, so let us know in the comment section how you're going to Use the third place. Where is your third place? And um, be sure to like, share, subscribe, share with your friends. Use that as an opportunity to spread the third place. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> I climb to the highest mountain.